Let's go. I'll give you a tour of the Sky Splitter. Look at this. A freight star skiff with enough room to fit at least 20 of my men. I'll let the others know and have them prepare more star skiffs. Once we're past the checkpoint, there will be beast ships waiting for us. Lord Moktok is ready. The revival of our ancient bloodline. All hinges on this operation. Did he just say? Beast ships? Who's there? It's those brats! I told you to get rid of them, but you didn't listen, you idiot! Wipe them all out! like that they're not Foxians at all they revealed their true form they're Borison just like the bandits I defeated on the IPC ship wait that means well how did the Borison manage to infiltrate the Sienjo It's not just a simple disguise of wearing our clothing and shaving their whiskers. They're somehow able to alter their appearance to be indistinguishable from Foxians. They even have official IDs for the Skyfaring Commission, the Artisanship Commission, and... and... even the Cloud Knights? Let me check this fake Cloud Knights tag. Maybe it'll give us some clues. Lujun? An officer of the patrol defense squad? Huh? Wait! What's the matter? I encountered a patrol officer named Lujun before. It was a few weeks ago, when we were transporting the Borison prisoners. If they can forge official identities and move around the Sienjo without raising suspicion... Oh no. This is bad. Uh, even worse. If you find one cockroach on the express, it usually means... There are more Boris in hiding on the Sienjo. I bet their plan is much bigger than just stealing information. We've got to report this to the Seat of Divine Foresight.
am glad to finally meet you in person, guests from the Astral Express. I'm Fei Xiao, the general of this Yanzhou Yao Cheng. Let me introduce our guest to you. The one dressed in green. He's the reincarnation of Inviter Lune, and the person behind him is the newest member of the crew. I've heard a lot about you. Outside the reports from the Law Fu, the Skyfaring Commission of the Yao Xing has also gathered plenty of information about both of you. I've been eager to meet you face to face for reasons that I'm sure General Jing Yuan has explained, right? <laughs> Straight to the point. I like it. According to General Jing Yuan's report, the Ruin Legion is to blame for the Ambrosial Arbor Crisis, and all Arbiter Generals should pay attention to the Ruin Author's movements. Over the years, the Destruction's minions have wreaked havoc on countless worlds, and the Alliance has been keeping an eye on them, but no one expected them to join hands with the remnants of the Abundance. The damage caused by the Ambrosial Arbor Crisis was far less severe than expected, which is good news for us. However, it was quite different from the Ruin Legion's usual style of destroying life wherever they go. While I trust the bravery of the Divine Foresight and the Nameless, I'm curious about some details missing from the report. I'd like to take this chance to have an exchange with both of you. Let me be clear, the questions I'll ask might not reflect my actual thoughts, so please don't take offense if any of my questions seem a bit harsh. Please go ahead, General. But keep in mind we can only answer based on what we know. And perhaps you already have the answers to your questions in your heart. <laughs> you have a clever tongue. I like it. The Merlin's claw is quite articulate. Right now, her intentions are unknown, and Jing Yuan wants us to be honest. Maybe I'll just stick to the facts we know. Let's cut to the chase. Before the crisis struck, the Astral Express was guided here by a Stellaron hunter, a wanted felon, in an attempt to resolve the Stellaron crisis. However, Everyone in the cosmos knows of the Stellaron Hunter's reputation. So, why did you place so much trust in them? Could it be that some of you have a connection with them? Rumor has it that Elio, the leader of the Stellaron Hunters, possesses the power to see into the future. He foresaw that the Sienjo and the Express would have important roles to play in the war against Nanook. That's why we were lured here to the Law Fu, to deal with the Stellaron Crisis and fulfill the prophecy. General Jing Yuan believes in this prophecy too, as mentioned in the report. I'm curious why you didn't question it at all. Could it be because one of the Stellaron hunters is actually an old acquaintance of General Jing Yuan? <sighs> Please be cautious with your words, Merlin's Claw. Let's avoid sowing doubt among our comrades. That Stellaron hunter used to be my disciple. So are you putting my loyalty in question too? I'm simply bringing up the doubts about General Jing Yuan that exist within the Alliance. Since I'm representing them, perhaps you can just imagine me as one of those old geezers. Let's move on to the next question. The report suggests that Don Shu, the master of the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus, colluded with the Lord Ravager and used the power of the Stellaron to resurrect the Ambrosial Arbor. But here's the thing. Don Shu was just a chief alchemist. Even if she colluded with our enemies and summoned the Stellaron, how did she manage to bypass the Vidyatara guards around the Ambrosial Arbor? If the 
the Law Fu hadn't exiled Don Hung, leaving the Vidyadara with no leader, they wouldn't have fallen into chaos, and there wouldn't have been the opportunity to bring the Stellaron to the roots of the arbor unnoticed. And Vibrator Lune was exiled due to his own crimes. Now, Don Hung, as his reincarnation, is free from his sins. However, why did he risk trespassing on the Sanzhou Law Fu before his exile was lifted? I was concerned about the safety of my companions, so I acted brazenly. I admit I was reckless at the time, but... But he returned despite everything. Now, let's consider the outcome. The arbor was resurrected, and the Law Fu required a High Elder to repair the seal and suppress the plague mark. It's hard not to think about the stakes involved, right? According to the report, Lord Ravager Fantilia is the mastermind behind the entire conspiracy. She disguised herself as an amicassador of the Skyfaring Commission and traveled with you, only to vanish without a trace later on. It seems too convenient to label her as a scapegoat. was there, fighting Fantilia alongside General Jing Yuan. But she absorbed the power of the Ambrosial Arbor and gained an almost indestructible physical form. Perhaps that was her intention all along. So a pawn of the destruction wanted a flesh and blood body to live in. <laughs> hmm, interesting. That's quite a new perspective. Well, it appears that you are still unable to give explanations for several details about how the Nameless got involved in the Ambrosial Arbor Crisis. Generals, I am finished with my questioning. So, what do you think, General Fei Shao? Have the doubts in the report been cleared up? <sighs> the two Nameless have been honest in their answers. Even though there are some tricky details, my intuition tells me there is nothing wrong. However, the three questions I posed earlier were not just for the Nameless, but for you too, General Jing Yuan. First, the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus grew uninterrupted on the Law Fu, yet the Six Charioteers were not aware of it. That was a dereliction of duty. Second, you believed in the Stellaron Hunter's prophecy and entrusted outsiders to solve the crisis, even granting them access to the Plague Mark. That was a dereliction of responsibility. Third, you insist on holding the war dance right after the Ambrosial Arbor Crisis, putting the Law Fu back in the spotlight. That is a dereliction of wisdom. Merlin's Claw, is this your line of thinking, or the Ten Lords? From the moment I walked in, I made it clear that the questions I'd ask might not reflect my actual thoughts. The disciples of Sanctus Medicus were deeply rooted and had been plotting for a long time. I admit it was my negligence for not noticing it earlier. As for the Stellaron Hunter's prophecy, I didn't believe all of it. But in the end, the Law Fu did survive the Ambrosial Arbor Crisis. So, I think it's safe to say that Elio's prophecy about the future holds some merit. And as for the war dance... Do you think I'm unaware of the risks? However, risks can also be opportunities. The Law Fu has lain low for too long. I believe it's time to stir up the dregs hidden in the depths and wash them away once and for all. <laughs> Just as I expected from our sophisticated divine foresight, you have a way with words. I like it. But, unfortunately, ever since the report was submitted, the Alliance has been filled with rumors and speculation. Even within the Law Fu, there are people accusing you of neglecting your duties, resulting in the Ambrosial Arbor's resurrection. So what are your thoughts on all of this? 
General Fei Shao. As a fellow Arbiter General, I fully understand the difficulties of this position. Personally, I think all these rumors are meaningless drivel. Across the sea of stars, the Divine Foresight knows better than anyone else what happened on the Lawfu and the meaning behind it. Just as what happened on the Xianzhou Yao Qing recently. You mean the Xianzhou Yao Qing is also. The scouts of the Verdant Knights have sent back reports that Borison are making trouble again. The Borison packs that were once divided and scattered have started swallowing each other up, forming larger and larger packs. Moreover, there's an entity named Mongus behind it all. An entity? According to the report, this entity isn't actually a Borison. It's a woman claiming to be the messenger of the Master of Immortality. She's described as having 12 faces and 12 pairs of fangs, as cruel as poison and as elusive as quicksand. The Borison believe she'll give them a chance to rise again. <sighs> That's Fentilia. That's right. You're lucky that I'm the one who came this time. If it were the Patina Justice or the Seer Strategist, this conversation might not be so friendly. I've always had faith in my instincts, so I don't doubt your good intentions. But the Alliance has its fair share of questions and doubts about the Law Fu. So my plan is to come up with an acceptable answer to satisfy the Alliance. What's in this plan, General Fei Shao? General Jing Yuan, you already know what has to be done. But since you don't want to be the bad guy, I'll take care of it for you. You need the final word from the Ten Lords Commission to quell any doubts. And for that, I'll have to ask the two Nameless to visit the Shackling Prison. No, I'm not imprisoning you. While you're there, I'll ask a judge in the Ten Lords Commission's Interrogation Division to record a detailed testimony with the karmic mirror from both of you. We'll fill in the gaps that weren't covered in the report, and silence any protests within the Alliance. I'm okay with that. Your willingness to help is truly heartwarming, youngsters. Ben. As the Merlin's Claw requests. Oh, there's one more thing. This testimony is for silencing the voices of opposition within the Alliance, but I would like to urge General Jing Yuan to listen to the pleas of the Foxians on the Xianzhou Yao Cheng. So, you are here for Hu Lei. Exactly. Hu Lei is locked up in the Law Fu's shackling prison. Since he is the broodlord of the Borison, I want to transfer him onto the Xianzhou Yao Qing and imprison him there. The recent movements of the Borison suggest they're planning something big, so we must act preemptively. It makes sense to have the Foxians keep an eye on their arch nemesis. Since you trust my judgment, I'll repay that trust. What do you think about all this, General Huayan? <laughs> I was worried this would turn into a heated argument, but it seems like both of you are on the same page, solving each other's problems. I couldn't have asked for a better outcome. And as for Hulei, I'll send my lieutenants Zhao Cho and Moza to check on his condition in prison and ready him for transport. If there are no more questions, shall we get this started? Well, I'm glad we managed to talk this out.
Do you actually believe in the Stellaron Hunter's prophecy? The Sienjo's matrix of prescience can also predict the future. Do you believe in its prophecies? Hmm, I understand. While words can be deceiving, your gaze, your breathing, and your scent, they reveal more than your words do. I trust my intuition more than any words. You're definitely a unique individual, just like Hua Yan said. I hope you'll walk alongside the rainbow's path as a friend. <sighs> I'm really sorry about all this, but the testimony in the Shackling Prison won't take up much of your time. I'll call for a messenger to take you to the interrogation division. You just need to give your testimony, and then you can head back. So no need to worry. As you wish, General. As General Jing Yuan requested, everything is prepared for your arrival, and I am here to receive you. The judges at the interrogation division also know your purpose in coming. The Shackling Prison. I... didn't expect to be back here after all these years. Don Hung. Don't worry about me. If you're ready, I'll open the gate for you. Well, technically, the Shackling Prison is spread out across multiple delves, and the Ancient Sea is just where they overlap. Please, come on in, dear guests. What are you looking at? The shackling prison on the Lawfu is completely different from the one on the Yaqing. It's completely underwater. Whether it's in the clouds or underwater, breaking free would still be a piece of cake for me. 
Still thinking about your old jailbreak tricks, huh? Forget it. You're free now. Just don't do anything stupid, or the judges will throw you back in there and lock you up for a few hundred years. You'll see me again in just a few days. Taking Hule back to the Yaoqing means a lot to the Foxians on the ship, and to the General herself. So stay alert. Guests, my name is Shui Yi, and I'm here on orders from the Incarceration Division of the Ten Lords Commission. We're Zhao Cho and Moza. General Fei Xiao sent us to extradite the Borisin criminal Hu Lei to the Yaoqing. We're here to inspect the conditions of his imprisonment and make preparations for the handover and transportation. I assume you've been briefed, Your Honor. Your visit request has been approved. I'll be your guide for this trip. Prisoner Hule, the warhead and brood lord of the Boris and Abominations of Abundance and the arch nemesis of the Foxians, is responsible for 2,123 wars of aggression and countless associated crimes. Due to his heinous acts, he has been imprisoned in the depths of the Shackling Prison and subjected to the punishment of the Forest of Swords until the end of time. He shall never be pardoned. No need to repeat his crimes and sentence, Your Honor. He is the greatest enemy of us Foxians. The stories of his atrocities are used to terrify our children. I'm well aware of every crime he's committed. Let's move on to the next step. When it comes to visiting criminals, there are rules in place to ensure your safety. I know you've heard legends about Hule since you were children, but your knowledge about him is likely very limited. Only the judges of the Ten Lords Commission truly know what kind of abomination is locked up at the bottom of the Shackling Prison. It has been centuries since Jing Liu, the former sword champion of the La Fu, captured Hule. And during all those years, we never provided him with any food. Yet he somehow managed to stay alive. It defies all the documented physical characteristics of the Borison. The Forest of Swords, forged by the Punishment Division, is a device of intense torment, used to execute sinful abominations. Most Borison die within three days in the forest, but Hule is different. Every time the blades pierce him, his body instantly heals. Despite the brutal punishment, he somehow manages to survive. The complex rules are there because of his abnormal characteristics. Do you understand now? I apologize for any offense caused. Please continue, Your Honor. I've given you the instructions regarding Hu Lei's visitation. Please, make sure you read them carefully. And please, take this pellet before proceeding. No, I'm not taking random medicine. Then you won't be allowed to visit Hule. Just swallow it already. Hule is like all Borison. He can release a pheromone called lupatoxin that induces fear. Thousands of years ago, we Foxians were enslaved by the Borison. Not because we were naturally weaker but because of their lupatoxin. This pill is for our own mental well-being. <sighs> I understand. 
I knew you were a reasonable person. Now that we've taken the medicine, let's proceed. <laughs> Your Honor. What is it? No. Never mind. Maybe I'm just imagining things. Let's keep moving. Here we are. Her honor hasn't arrived yet. Please wait a moment. Her honor hasn't arrived yet. Please wait a moment. Inspection complete. Nothing suspicious. Welcome, dear guests from the Express. Judge Hanya of the Interrogation Division. We've met before. Hmm? You don't want to see me? Well, in that case, I can call in the judge who's an expert in acupuncture, or the one who's handy with axes and saws, or the one who knows all about whips and ropes. We've got plenty of options here, and we'll find one that suits your taste. <laughs> just kidding. We judges work in shifts, and it just happens to be my shift. Maybe we're destined to cross paths. Please allow me to express my gratitude to you again for subduing the demons in the Fixtral Garden. Looks like while March 7th and I were clueless... You already made many friends on the Shenzhou Lofu. Even though you and I have met before, we can't show any favoritism under the Ten Lords. So, please do as I command as we head to Scrivener Hall and beyond. Don't do anything without my permission. This is not a place for ordinary mortals. You and Mr. Danhang. Please come with me. Please lead the way, Your Honor. Please let me activate the mechanism before we all move forward. And please, watch your steps. Be very careful and watch your step as you make your way through. The terrain inside the Shackling Prison is treacherous. One wrong move, and you could end up plunging into the depths. And if you're really unlucky, you might be frozen solid or burned to a crisp before anyone can help you. Gee. But with your skills, 
I don't think you need to worry about that. <sighs> You're funny. This prison does contain many layers. We even brought in Vidyodora Icor line craftsmen to introduce the ingenuity of Delve Enchantment. What you're seeing now is just one part of the Shackling Prison. Perhaps. Judging from the appearance, much of the architecture in this prison has a Vidyodoran style. So, perhaps they did have a hand in building this place back then. As for how many floors there are, well, not even us judges know for sure. But there's a legend among us judges that a short-life prisoner once tried to escape, but ended up falling into the depths. And when we found him at the bottom, he was already an old man on the brink of death. Did he spend his whole life falling? Or did some long-life prisoner drain his life essence? Hm. We'll never know. Anyway, Please don't try anything like that. Please, come this way. Danger detected, but never let your guard down. Inspection complete. Nothing suspicious.
freezing. <laughs> this place is filled with the cold air from the northern peak of the polar delve. Even the toughest long life species would have a hard time enduring this. Precision. Inspection complete. Nothing suspicious. Did you hear? 
hear something just now? Let me check it out. Ugh, what an eyesore. This place is packed with boxes and crates. No danger detected. But never let your guard down. These crates... They look oddly familiar. A few days ago, the Spirit Spiritfarers received reports about an IPC transport ship that was attacked by Borison. Then, a bunch of those abominations were dumped into this place. I had a feeling there would be trouble during the war dance. But throwing both the pirates and the cargo in jail? <laughs> That's a new one. I heard the Intelligentsia Guild crafted something dangerous. We have many records in the Hall of Karma about these wise ones. They love to tinker with forbidden technologies, always trying to push the limits of Ingenia. I caught a glimpse of the mechs in those crates, and they bear a striking resemblance to Borison. I wonder what they're planning this time. Well, business first. Let's keep moving. <sighs> Strange. I don't remember checking the containment facilities a second time. Possible. The spirit fairers follow the protocols, cutting off power to the mechs and sealing the crates. How could these mechs still start moving? It's just like what happened in the artisanship commission before. These goods went haywire and attacked everyone in sight. The Alchemy Commission members examined them and found some unusual structures within. These things showing up in the Shackling Prison can only mean one thing. A prison break. And whoever delivered these goods clearly wanted them to go through the Xianzhou's strict inspection process to show the Skyfaring Commission and Cloud Knights how dangerous they were. They wanted these mechs to end up right here, in the Shackling Prison. <sighs> these things already started taking action while nobody was paying attention, then the whole prison is in trouble, I'm afraid. And to make things worse, another group of visitors just entered the depths of the Shackling prison, the messengers from the Xianzhou Yaoqing. And the prisoner they came to visit might be the target whom these wolf-shaped mechs were delivered here for. 
If that vicious beast manages to break free, it will be a catastrophe for the Xianzhou Luofu. Here we are. Have we arrived already, Your Honor? Shouldn't there be a cage here? The most notorious felons are locked away in the solitary delves, deep down in the prison. Those delves can't be opened without proper authorization. The blue bird paves the path, and the Stygian lanterns illuminate it. Help me light up these lanterns, and the way to the bottom of the Shackling prison will reveal itself. A slow simmer over low heat, or a quick stir-fry over high heat? Why keep such good things so hidden? I've given you the diagrams for lighting the lanterns. Please take a look.
It's better to use your brain and save your strength. is open. Once we descend to the bottom of the prison, please do not do anything reckless. Inside the delve behind this door is the greatest enemy of the Foxians, Hule. According to custom, envoys from the Yao Qing visit the Xianzhou La Fu once every century to check on this abomination's imprisonment and condition. Even though the Ten Lords Commission sentenced Hule to the Forest of Swords, suffering every day for the rest of his life, I understand that the Yao Qing messengers want to see him dead. Unfortunately, for the past seven centuries, they've had to return disappointed, because this beast simply can't be killed. If we can use his toxin to create medicine and save an innocent life, might help balance out some of the sins he's committed. Could you be the key to a cure for the general, Hule? <laughs> and once again, the envoys of the Yao Qing will leave disappointed. However, I won't say the same for me and my brothers. Who's there? I'm just a humble counselor of the Rhino Hound Pack. You can call me Mock Talk. Wardens, intruders on the lowest level! Send reinforcements! Nobody will hear you here, at the bottom of the shackling prison. Thank you for opening up the prison for us, Your Honor. We'll take it from here. No wonder I kept smelling that familiar stench. So, it wasn't just my imagination. Do your thing, Morsa. We mustn't let these abominations get any closer! There are too many of them. Once we were inside the Shadow Prison, we found them. soldiers failing us everywhere. I am so everything! Burns to ashes! I suggest you surrender now. Of course, I'll still kill you. But I promise it'll be sweet. Dare attack me! Since you're already here, why not have a meal before you leave? <laughs> Do we have to fight? <laughs> why, of course! Get them! <laughs> Let the enemy strike first, and then take them by surprise. Let's add more seasoning. 
joining the battle. How presumptuous. Die now! Leave if you can, Yosa. It's not time yet. Stars. Oh, profound secret to the stars! Give these trailblazers your blessing! As the old verdant home spun around since our last hunt. <sighs> Duran's whelp. Tell me your name. Oh, great Hule. Nemesis of the Foxians and the hunter of all beings. I'm Moktok, a humble counselor of the Rhino Hound Pack. I am only one insignificant heir spawned from your bloodline. It's been. 
At least seven centuries since you led our pack to the hunting grounds of the stars. I'm thrilled to see that you are as cunning and skillful as ever. Seven centuries. Seven centuries have passed. But... Why have Doran's whelps grown to look like this? Tell me, Moktok. Why have you grown to assemble our most despicable slaves and enemies, the Boxians? I've been commanded to release you from this cursed prison. It is Senjaya's will. That's why I had to take a magic pill, don the skin of a lowly beast, and play along with their hypocrisy. Since you have an escape plan, tell me. What's our next move to get off of this ridiculously large ship? My brothers and I will lock down this prison, trapping the prison guards inside. This will buy us some time. The rest of my crew, who are undercover like me, will secure the vessels for our escape. According to the plan, we only have a tight two-hour window to get out of here. Originally, I intended to carry out the plan tomorrow. But they're planning to transfer you to the Sienjo Yaoqing now. So I seize this opportunity to set you free. <sighs> what a reckless plan, you idiot! Even if we manage to get the ships, our chances of escaping are slimmer than a Foxy in slipping through my claws! But we have no other choice. The angel serving under the Master of Immortality sent me with a message. Only your return will end the prolonged divisions among the Borison. Every one of my crew is ready to lay down their lives if it means setting you free. <laughs> A sneaky weakling like you is actually showing some reckless bravery with this plan. Fine. You'll get what you want. And all of Duran's whelps will, too. Well then, my lord. We should leave now. Before we go... Give me one of those magic pills. My lord, do you seriously want to don the skin of a lowly beast? That would be a disgrace to your greatness, my lord. You idiot. Greatness means nothing without freedom. Once I get out, I'll need a disguise that won't raise any suspicion. As you wish, my lord. Mm. Is that Foxy enslave my meal? No, he's an envoy from the Sienjo Yaoqing. I plead you to endure him a bit, my lord, as he's more valuable as a hostage. Take him, guys. Time to move out. <laughs> Madam Hanya, the wardens in all areas are regrouping. Those ingenium enemies are wandering around and causing heavy casualties. And to make things worse, those iron wolves broke open the cages and let the criminals out. We've called for backup. But it seems like all communication is jammed. Let's preserve our strength and first take down the isolated prisoners. By decree of the Ten Lords, all prison breakers and intruders shall be apprehended, dead or alive. Just a short time ago, the Nether Key mechanism was activated. It was probably Madame Shui and the Yao Qing messengers heading to the bottom of the prison. Given the situation, I'm afraid that area is exactly where our enemies are targeting. We mustn't let that vile beast escape from its cage. We've gathered all the prison guards who can still fight, and we'll split up and secure each floor. Go! Those intruders are quite bold. They must have been planning this for quite a while. Indeed, but Boris intend to favor direct and aggressive approaches. Crafting careful and precise plans like this is simply not their style. Let's focus on the current situation right now. Please help me.
What's the fastest way to the bottom of this prison, Miss Hanya? If we don't get there quickly, we'll soon be outnumbered by all the enemies inside. We'll have to bend the rules. Please, follow me. Prisoners must remain in place and obey the By decree of the Ten Lords, all prison breakers and intruders shall be apprehended, dead or alive. Yes, ma'am! 